get the ball rolling because we don't want to take too much of your time. We have a lot to share. Hypertension, measuring home blood pressure, and the techniques that will help you. So without uh, you know just doing all the talking um, without my slides, let's move on to what exactly we are going to be doing and see if we can uh, uh, basically understand it well. So uh, topic, as I said earlier, measuring blood pressure. Are you measuring it wrong? You probably have been doing it over some time. And if you have, at least it's not too late because today you're going to know and learn how to measure it right and uh, and see if you are doing it the right way or not. And if you are, then of course you reinforce that. And if you are not, you're going to learn how to do it better. So blood pressure or hypertension is what we're dealing with, especially measuring uh, your blood pressure. We're going to be talking about a few things in that regard. Now, with that being said, I uh, want to head straight to our um, uh, slides. And the first thing is just to let you know that's what we're talking about. And then after that, we are literally going to give you the uh, rundown of what we are going to be doing, which the first one is going to be what uh, BP um, numbers. numbers mean. The screen is too far for me. What the numbers, if you measure your blood pressure at home, what do they even mean uh, to you? We're going to explain what the numbers literally are so that uh, it's not just, hey, my blood pressure is high. So what does does what the number uh, or the numbers, what do they mean? And then after that, we're going to also talk about um, some guidelines from the American Heart Association as to who has hypertension. So if you know what the numbers are, you can tell if your uh, blood pressure is controlled or not, if you have hypertension, if you have hypertension or not. Uh, granted that you still have to be diagnosed by a healthcare professional, but at least we will expose you to what the doctors use to determine whether or not you are hypertensive or if you have high blood pressure. And so uh, we're going to uh, look at some of the data from the reputable organization called the American Heart Association. And then? Then we continue with our, the different types of monitors. So if you decide to get one for yourself, what kind of monitor are you going to be buying? So we will try and differentiate different, the different types of uh, the monitor and what is appropriate and what's good for you. And we also talk about how to take your blood pressure. And we talk about how to take your blood pressure. Well, that, is the, that, that is the real source. The real, the real point of our show is to teach you how to take your blood pressure right because it's important to do it well. If you have the machine and you don't do it well, you may be just gnashing. So we're going to show you how to do that on point in the right way. And then after that, we also will give you some tips and tools for getting the best of uh, the numbers when you do your blood pressure readings. We're going to show you some of the tips that you got to incorporate in your daily or weekly or however many times you check your blood pressure so that you get the best out of your machine. And then after that, we are also going to uh, also talk about um, some of the things you have to do. You know, we always uh, encourage people to, uh, you know, do regular checkups and other stuff. We will also talk about a little bit of those things so that you just don't know your numbers and just know them for no one's sake, but what you got to do after you know the numbers. And if we continue, uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, we'll be glad to address all questions and concerns. Then we will put up what we'll talk about next week too. All right, and then we will address your concerns and talk about next week. All right, so I think we are on the run. Now, again, if you haven't shared the stream, I do well and share because we have a lot, as you can tell, a lot of information. Some of these things we're going to talk about, we're going to break them further down. So you don't want anybody to miss and you don't want to miss out either. So stay on until we say that we are done and it will be uh, worth your while. All right. So with that being said, I think we'll move forward. And uh, first thing uh, we're going to talk about is what, uh, what the numbers mean. And I'll put an example there. As a, in case you check your blood pressure and your pressure is 120, uh, the top number, over 80. What is the meaning of that? 120 over 80. And so that's what we're going to start off with. I mean, it could be 140, it could be 110. But if you see that number, what does it mean? I mean, it's starting. Yes, yeah, so uh, we know that the top one is a systolic. 
and the bottom one is the diastolic, mm -hmm. right? So the, the systolic is when the heart contracts. And when it contracts, it tries to pump out the blood. So the pressure on the arteries when the heart pumps out blood is the top number, which is the systolic. And when it relaxes, uh, that is the bottom number and that's the diastolic. So when the top number is high and the bottom one is normal, it means that when your heart contracts or try to pump blood out, the pressure on the artery walls is too high. So that makes you have a high blood pressure. All right, all right, all right. So that is what the top number is. Now, if I, if I would talk about it, small number, which is the bottom number for most devices, that number is down. It's also called the diastolic number. Now, the diastolic number, what basically that is, uh, is basically the opposite of what Gifty explained. The top number contraction, the diastolic is when it is relaxed. So the heart goes squeezed and the blood goes. That is when the, the top number is measured. And then when it stops or relaxes to squeeze again, the time that it relaxes, that is when the other pressure is measured, which is the diastolic number. Now, then... Um, I think we're going to know which uh, what numbers, uh, what is good and what is bad. But uh, at least for now, the idea is if you are measuring your blood pressure, the top number is the one that happens when your heart contracts or when your heart squeezes out the blood. And then uh, the bottom number is the number when your heart relaxes. And that is the pressure measured on your arterial walls. All right, so I think that is exhaustive. I mean, we don't want to use the whole time for that. So at least that is clear enough to know when you have a blood pressure machine, what we are looking for in terms of the machine and its um, measurement and what it is doing. So with that being said, we can move on and go to the next one. And the next thing is we're going to be talking about the American Heart Association guidelines for hypertension. And the reason we want to use that is every institution, as a matter of fact, um, I would even say that every clinic or every hospital or every uh, country or, I mean, wh whatever you could uh, think about, any group of um, people may set their own different uh, guidelines. guidelines in terms of what they will see as hypertensive and what they will see as being okay. Um, but that being said, since we are in the United States and United States having some of the best standards of care as far as... Um, blood pressure is concerned, we can safely use uh, the guidelines from the U.S. as a guide, you know, to show everybody what hypertension is. So no matter where you're watching us from, um, this is what we believe in as a standard of practice from the American Heart Association. And so with that, uh, we say that uh, blood pressure uh, can be or can be explained in this way. I mean, the, the guidelines for them is this way. So I'll talk about the first line. And I'll have a uh, pause and give to talk about a second. I'll come back just so we can all uh, have time. All right. So um, according to the AHA or American Heart Association, your blood pressure is normal if the top number is less than 120. Less than 120. It means the top number or the number of when your heart contracts, which we just explained, uh, is less than 120. Then you have normal blood pressure as well as if the uh, bottom number is less than 80. In other words, if one of these two numbers is high, you are not technically normal. So both of them have to be less than 120 being the top and then the, um, the, uh, the bottom number being less than 80. That is when we say that you have normal blood pressure. And then you want to talk okay. about... And uh, I think uh, the second category is... Uh, it being elevated. So your high blood pressure, your pressure is elevated when the numbers are between 120 to 129. When it happens that way, then it means that your blood pressure is elevated. If you check the, the bottom number here, you can see that it's still less than 80. So when you take your measurement, maybe just the top part will be elevated, will be high, then you are not considered normal. You're considered that your blood pressure is elevated, is high. Mm -hmm. 
Some people uh, categorize it as you being a borderline. Or prehypertensive. Right? Prehypertensive. You are not hypertensive yet, but the the top part, which is the systolic, is elevated, which is not less than 120, but now it's 120 to 129. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. And uh, the thing that uh, we would also want you to know is many people are already on the elevator column. I mean, for the most part, you know, these days, it's only a few people who are in the normal, if you think about it. And if you if you don't agree, just if you have a machine, grab it right now. <laughs> and let's check. My goodness. <laughs> most people are already over. So 120 or less than 120 and less than 80 is becoming very hard to achieve, except in children uh, mm -hmm. and some women too. Um, but it's becoming very hard to achieve. But at least it is good to have that in perspective. So um, elevated is where most people are. And I think re uh, recently we even called those people normal. But now the standards have changed. You know, it's been more stringent. So it's now saying that elevated is 120 to 129 on the top number. <laughs> now, moving forward, the next level is when you have your blood pressure uh, called, called as pre, I mean, called as hypertension, stage one hypertension. Stage one hypertension is when the top number or the systolic number is 130 to 139. So now you are over 130. So now you can be classified as having hypertension proper. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good thing, but at least you, you know what it is. 130 over, uh, 130 to 139 is definitely hypertension stage one. And then, or, so hypertension stage one, either the top number is between 130 or 130 to 139, and the bottom number is 80 to 89. So it's either or. Either it is 130, the top, to 139, or maybe the top number is normal. Mm -hmm. The top number maybe 120 or, uh, over 80. But then the bottom number is this time over 80. So either or will also classify you as uh, having uh, stage one hypertension. And as a matter of fact, I think I made a mistake in the first one when I said the normal, it has to be uh, one or the other. It's, it's, and it's, okay. yes, both of them must be uh, less than 80 and 120 to be classified as normal. All right, so you can take the next one. Yeah, so if uh, I can uh, continue with the same thought, you can have elevated uh, systolic, which can be 129, but the bottom may be above 80, then you may be considered stage one, mm -hmm. right? So depending on where you are, the doctor may classify you as you having or you being a prehypertensive or being a stage one. So you get to stage two when your systolic number is higher than 139. Now you are around 140 or higher. And or the bottom is 90 or higher, then you are considered stage two. My goodness. So stage two is either one, two. It could <laughs> be either the top number being higher than 140 or the bottom number being higher than 90. That is stage two hypertension. <laughs> wow. And again, if you have a machine, grab it. And uh, once we teach you how to check it, you will check it and tell us if you, uh, if you want to see where you are. Because this is practical we're doing here. It's, uh, it's too much about talking about uh, you know, the theory. Now we are doing it proper. So if you have the machine, uh, we're going to show you how to do it best, best. And then you'll be able to know whether or not you are at, at an elevator column or you are at a uh, high stage one or high stage two. And I guess the next one, if you are watching with us on Facebook, you can see this uh, beautiful image. That's why we say that if you're on uh, Twitter and want to join us on, on YouTube, um, go to Dr. Oteng, D-R space O-T-E-N-G, and you're going to be able to see the images that we are showing as we move forward. But definitely on uh, the next one is hypertensive crisis. Mm -hmm. So this time it is more than 180. So if you have uh, blood pressure over 180, then you are in a crisis, crisis stage. And or if your bottom number is over 120. So if you check your pressure as we speak, 
and your pressure on the bottom number is more than 120, you are in a crisis situation. This is where if you had come to me, I'll tell you that, sit down, I'll call 911 for you. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe a bit tired, I'll tell you to go straight to your doctor, have somebody drive you straight to the doctor's office and make sure that you are taken care of. Uh, honey, I had somebody check their blood pressure and they told me what I didn't know was 180. Mm -hmm. And they were, I asked them, are you hypertensive? Have you been diagnosed? And they were like, yeah, I am hypertensive. And then uh, they said, oh, I haven't taken my medication today. Uh, I'm going to start taking it tomorrow. I'm like, what are you waiting for? Take it right now. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> Take it right now. Why? Because at this point, it is a crisis situation. You can stroke out. You can have a, a, a bleed in your brain uh, causing the stroke, of course. You can have an aneurysm. You can have a heart attack. And of course, all those things not happening does not mean that you are good. What it means that then is that you are probably getting your heart enlarged and uh, damage going on in your kidneys. Mm -hmm. So that is a crisis situation for you. If you are over 180 and you are uh, hanging around, uh, please, that's not good. According to the American Heart Association, at least. And uh, again, some place they may see 160 as an emergency. Mm -hmm. Some place they may see 200 as an emergency. But at least we, we are going to roll with what the American Heart Association say for today. But uh, as a matter of fact, for me, even if you come to me with a pressure of 150, I would make you, I would make, especially if you are not on medication, I'll make you, you know, call your doctor right away and see uh, if they can see you and make sure things are done. Because you, the fact that it's 150 doesn't mean it's going to stay at 150 at that point. It means that when you are not looking, it probably goes higher than 150. And so it is an emergency. As soon as you hit over stage two, you can call it an emergency regardless. That's what I think. Mm. Do you agree with me? Yeah, I mm. do. But if you're taking it wrong or if you are measuring it wrong, mm -hmm. that's the reason for this uh, discussion too. If you're not doing it right or you're doing all the wrong things, it's likely that you may have wrong reading. So stay with us so that as we go through, we'll be able to help you decide whether your numbers are the true reflection of whatever is going on in you or you are you are taking the reading you're doing the the whole thing wrong so stay with us and as we go through we will help you decide that the numbers is the true reflection of what is going on in you that's a very good point to bring up stay with us and we will let you know you will know if you are getting it right or not and definitely we will explain it as we move forward so with that being said, I think we can move forward now. As Now that we have this down, so we, we just want to make sure that at least you understand what the numbers. So now when you check it, you know what you're getting. Uh, it's not, I'm not going to be there and say that I go to the hospital. You know, for at least if you forget, you can always reverse uh, uh, this video and go back and say, what did those people say that American Heart Association talks about as far as the guidelines are? You can always go back and look at the video and see. And of course, if you are not sure, just call your doctor because they have the information, especially to your specific uh, needs. And so that is what it is. And the other thing that we should also uh, be careful to say is that you may be treated already for hypertension. Uh, perhaps your uh, doctor is t treating you already for hypertension and your goal is set at 140. And yet we are here telling you that 140 is you know, stage two. Uh, it doesn't mean that your doctor is not treating you well. What it means is that for their institution, they look for you already diagnosed to come to that level. So probably with that treatment, you'll be hitting the 180, 200 where you stroke out. And so if they can achieve your goal as less than 140, then they are doing something. So don't say that your doctor is not doing a good job. Mm -hmm. No, they have individual goals for each organization. And uh, of course, once being treated, uh, you are also a little bit on a higher, you know, uh, what should I say? Uh, like you, you, you are treated different from somebody who has not had, been, uh, who has not been diagnosed as hypertensive because for them they don't have it at all. But you, if you have it and you try and you you are set off as a goal, have been set up with a goal of 140. As long as you can keep it there, you can say that at least you are doing okay. So don't say that, oh my doctor is no good. Why is that? Uh, and when I tell him it's 140, they are fine with it. Uh, it's um. Uh, dependent on your goals per your doctor's treatment. For some people, if they if, if you even bring it so down, 
Uh, it may not augur well for them. Other things may come in, like they may be too dizzy, they may, they may be blacking out. And so uh, hitting your goal in a place where it's not too high, but not too low, may be what they want for you. The, the key, <laughs> I think, is that you're being treated and you are following through with taking your medications. You are not messing your medications. If you are taking it and the doctor knows, and you know you're doing the right things, you're eating right and doing all the things, then at least if it, your goal is there, it's fine. But you yourself can shoot for a better goal. You yourself can say that my doctor is fine with 130 or 140, but I want to actually go all the way to 130 mm -hmm. and what, or 120. And what you will do then is to increase your uh, dietary uh, changes and your lifestyle changes, which we're going to talk about as we move forward. If you can set those goals up with uh, your lifestyle change, and they can uh, help you uh, for that. All right. So I think that's uh, mm -hmm. a, a good way to go forward. All right. So with that being said, now let's move on to our next topic that we want to talk about. So now we're going to be all talking about uh, all the kinds of home blood pressure monitors that are around. Um, of course, we won't be able to mention all of them, but we're going to be able to uh, share with you some common uh, classes, I, I should say, right? <laughs> uh, groups that are, are, are available for you um, here in the U.S. and in other places that you can buy. And then also after that, we will also tell you which ones we think are not good and which ones we think are good. And so I think we're going to start off here. <laughs> you think... It's a good point to go on. All right. So then uh, the first one that we want to talk about is we have manual and automatic uh, blood pressure monitors that you can buy for your, for your use at home. And um, the one we've shown on our slide here is a manual one. Now, we are talking about measuring this blood pressure by yourself at home. And so um, you can tell that I'm just going to say that the manual will not be the best because we're going to tell you how to take your blood pressure in a, in a little bit. Uh, and one of the things is that you don't want to be working. In a manual situation, this man has to do it by himself. This is, we, again, we're doing this as if you and yourself, you by yourself, you are checking the blood pressure. So if you're going to be doing the manual one, it may require you squeezing and pumping air to inflate and the cough just to make sure you get a reading. And I, I for one, think that will obviously not be a good thing for you. So I would prefer the automatic ones. Initially, the automatic ones were not reliable. But with technology these days, you can be sure. In fact, in my doctor's office, they replaced the um, manual. manual ones with, uh, with automatic ones. So they put a cough on you and they hit the button and then it, it starts pumping the air. They don't have to do those squeezing anymore. So that's what I have to say for mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And normally, I think the, um, the health uh, care professionals mm -hmm. use the manual. And the manual is done in such a way that somebody has to do it on you. Yes. Like you're saying, we want to have something that we can do at the comfort of our home and we can do it ourselves. So, and you have, you have to have this clinical ear and all that to be able to know when that diastolic starts and when the systolic and all that that is a little complicated for most people so i think we will go with the automatic one definitely the automatic one is what we want automatic blood pressure measurement is what you want manual ones are to me they are out of date now with technology these days you don't want to be squeezing and pumping and pumping and as i said even the doctor's office, where they have nurses trained to do that, they are even stopping those. Mm -hmm. And so if you are buying one for yourself at home, especially because of one of the things we're going to discuss, which is the preparation before you do your blood pressure, uh, doing the manual will not be what you want to do. All right, so we can move forward, mm -hmm. right? All right, so that is one class of blood pressure monitors, but our preference is for the automatic one. The next one is we have wrists versus arm cuff blood pressures, blood pressure monitors. You know, I don't know, should I start? Yes, sir. All right. So for this kind too, there are some blood pressure machines that you attach only to your wrist. And then the reading, the, the LCD screen is on top of your wrist, wrist or uh, opposite, you know, or, or, or behind your wrist or however it tells you to do. And the numbers are read off like that. And then also, there are ones that have an arm cuff that goes around your upper arm and 
um, the machine itself is separated from you. So uh, there's a tubing that goes through the arm and causes the reading uh, to uh, happen. And uh, I'll, I'll let you continue. What, 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 which one is the one we prefer? Yes. Yeah, so I think um, if you go to the pharmacies and places that sell uh, blood pressure mm -hmm. monitors, you can see the wrist and the arm uh, cuff monitors. So we are encouraging each one of us to go with the arm cuff one. I know some people claim that the wrist one is portable, is smaller, you can carry with you, you can put it in your bag and all that. But it has been known that the wrist does not give uh, an accurate reading. You want the reading to be as close as possible, like you are, you are in your doctor's office. So the arm, which is the one that we are encouraging, gives the closest uh, numbers, closer to the one that your doctor's office will use. So we encourage you to stick with the arm uh, cuff one over the wrist. All right, so the arm cuff one over the wrist. And this is, um, as you can tell, this is the arm cuff. It's got a tube. And then so that will go over your wrist, uh, over your arm um, right here. And then you inflate. The machine is separate. So you see the machine is different from the um, the cuff. The wrist one, all of them are together. And then you tie it around your wrist. So we prefer that you go with a device that has a separate cuff and a separate machine connected by a tubing. Mm -hmm. And then you use it that way. That is what we we prefer, at least it's not just we, that is what steady show that are the best ones. So if you already have the rest one, uh, we don't say, you're not saying throw it out. We are saying that invest in a different one that goes on the upper arm. And that is what we want you to get. Until you get it, you can still be using your rest one. And uh, it's better than at least nothing. But if you're going to buy one fresh, then skip the rest ones. Some people think that the wrist ones are easy to carry because mm -hmm. it's small. Portable. Very portable, that's what they say. Um, but portability does not mean accuracy. It may be portable, but if you are getting the wrong numbers, what's the point of holding or carrying it around because it's small? Uh, or if it's not accurate, you know. Some, there may have been some improvements there, mm -hmm. but um, we will see again why we think that it should be on the arm, at least according to what the American Heart Association suggests. Also, all right. So that is that one, and then uh, the next one. Oh, uh, the the machine wants to just check me right now, but I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Thinks I'm stressed, so I should probably test mine. <laughs> all right, all right. So now let's move on. Now the next one that we want to uh, talk about in this group is the Bluetooth and uh, cell phone or enabled or iPad enabled uh, monitors. I also have that one, but we're running against them, so I didn't have time to bring it downstairs here. Uh, you have a device that is also standalone, and you literally just connect this, and the Bluetooth connectivity will make you read the uh, reading on your phone or on your iPad, uh, depending on whatever mobile device that you have. You connect it by Bluetooth, and that is another easy way, especially for those of us who like technology and wouldn't want to you know, just be messing up with uh, old um, devices and big devices like this. You just want something that you just put on your arm and you take the pressure on your phone. And for some people, it's easier because they have access to the numbers anytime. They go to the doctor's office and they want to show the doctors, oh, pull it on the phone and they show them right there. Unlike somebody who has to write it down uh, from this kind, you have to write it down each time you test or you measure in order to be able to bring it to your doctor's office to show them and um, or bring the whole machine so that they can flip through. So uh, that is the convenience with this one. I'm pretty sure it has its own drawback. What do you think? Uh, for uh, which for one? The, the Bluetooth ones too. They may um, have, yeah. They, yeah, so I don't know. Uh, some people are not high tech and most people no, may not be able to use it as well. So I, I'm still sticking with the automatic uh, cuff, arm um, cuff one. Oh, come on, man. Some people are not high tech. Some people are not high tech like I am. Or some, some of us who, who like technology. <laughs> Even when we don't need tech, we just need to use tech, all right? So if you are that person and you, you can't figure out you know, these things, of course, it is uh, 
it is the best bet to go with the automatic arm cuff, which you can flip through and write them down when you need to. And, and so, but for young ones, you know, to make it easier for the young ones who are so glued to their phones and iPads and stuff, you know, you can have a device like that. It looks kind of cool. So you won't feel like, you know, when you are checking somewhere, it's, it's a big deal because you are young. No, uh, you can always do that also. So for those younger ones um, uh, who are very high tech and they want to be high tech, that's something you could invest in. And they have them all in a, all the electronic shops. You just go, it's a little more expensive, but of course, if you want to roll with high tech, you got to roll with the money too, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, can we move forward? Mm -hmm. All right, so that is that for the types. I don't think there's another one. Yes, there's another group of blood pressure monitors. And uh, this one I see at my place of work all the time. Uh, this is the standalone fixed public devices, which you can find in um, pharmacies. You can find in um, um, groceries, supermarkets, and Airport. uh, airports sometimes. Uh, it may be country specific it may just be in the u.s i'm not sure how it is in in, in the european union or in some other countries but in the u.s in some pharmacies at least if you walk in there you want to check your blood pressure uh, you can ask for the pharmacist and the machine is usually outside right in front of the pharmacy and you can sit in push in a button and it's an automatic uh, cuff you put your hand in and it will read your blood pressure if you follow the instructions if you have any difficulty you can ask your pharmacist to uh, you know, for assistance, and uh, they will be willing. This person here is being assisted by a pharmacist. They'll be willing to help you take your blood pressure. So you don't have any excuse. Uh, you know, people who say that I don't have a machine, I don't have money to buy a machine. All right, you go to shop all the time, find a place where there's a machine, and shop there so that you can also take your blood pressure every day there, which I don't think is the best place to do uh, mm. because we are going to talk about the techniques of making sure you get the best blood pressure machine. I mean, blood pressure reading. So if you have to be walking in the uh, grocery supermarket, you know, to go and check your pressure, you may be missing out on the accuracy mm. uh, a little bit. And plus some of the devices, because they are public, it being used so many times that you're not even sure if the calibration is really on point because um, time has taken the toll on them, especially if it's not new. So, uh, but at least if you have no means of affording a blood pressure monitor, this will be uh, available to you if you find a pharmacy that has. Yeah, and I think uh, because of COVID, uh, most of the devices, some of them have been removed and it may not be available, readily available like you used to anymore. Right, some of them may have been removed and may not be readily available. All right, uh, so that is what is up. Hopefully they will come back because COVID is uh, gone now, at least the pandemic itself <laughs> is gone, so... Hopefully they will bring them back because I mean I've seen people come and uh, they make use of it. You mm -hmm. know, like an like example that I gave you, somebody coming to check and was one eighty, you know, and I had another person coming to check, and I, I've seen many people who uh, I can't say were diagnosed there because obviously uh, you need a series of checks before you can be diagnosed. But people who have found out their pressure were was very high in such a situation and they were referred to see a doctor immediately or go to the emergency room and so if you don't have any and you have to use it then of course you should be able to use that right mm -hmm. all right so let's move forward then now the next thing that we want to talk about is checking your blood pressure by itself now this is the meat of a show how do you check the pressure and we have written down the steps to make sure we don't miss anything so we're going to be going through um, uh, three major areas where you should uh, follow to make sure you check your pressure and get an accurate number and you can check your number your pressure all right but if you are getting the wrong numbers you may be doing yourself more harm than good because you may be relying on wrong numbers to make decisions mm. which may not be in your best interest so for you uh, to get the best numbers, you got to follow the American Heart Association approved ways. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to show you what the AHA approves approve as the best ways to go for checking your blood pressure. And the first step is what we call the preparation period. So before you take your blood pressure, there is the first step is to prepare. 
and you need. Yeah, so preparing means that there are certain things that you shouldn't do or things that you should do, right? So the first one is to avoid caffeine. Uh, if you are a coffee drinker, try and stay away from coffee at least 30 minutes before you take your blood pressure because studies have shown that it can spike your blood pressure falsely. It may not be true, mm -hmm. but... If you take it within 30 minutes before you take your reading, it may affect the numbers. So you have to avoid caffeine or anything that has coffee, uh, caffeine in there, right? Like tea, coffee, or anything, the drinks that have caffeine in there. And you, you should also not exercise. You shouldn't spike your blood pressure, but because jumping here and there, exercising can also uh, mask the true reading of your pressure and also you shouldn't if you are a smoker you shouldn't smoke within the 30 minutes of taking your reading so three things you have to avoid you have to avoid caffeine you have to avoid exercising and you have to stop smoking 30 minutes before your reading is checked oh my goodness so i like that we, we stress the fact that 30 minutes 30 minutes before you do it so don't don't say that we say oh you don't have to exercise no you got to exercise, bro. <laughs> you got to exercise, sis. You got to exercise. But the key is, before you check your pressure, let 30 minutes lapse. So even if you exercised and you want to take the pressure, you got to wait until 30 minutes after that, at uh, which point your heart, will be, your heart would have rested enough <laughs> to give you an accurate reading. Because exercise will raise your pressure. And so if you exercise and you take it, you will not get a true reading. And so that is the whole point. So don't say that we say no exercise if you want to check. Exercise, but make sure it is not within 30 minutes of when you check your pressure. And for the coffee drinkers, some of you may ask, well, why is she saying that I can't drink my coffee? That's because coffee is also noted to have some cardiovascular effect. Coffee can raise your heart, can make your heart beat faster. And as a matter of fact, it also uh, increases your blood pressure a little bit. So if you drink coffee within 15 minutes and you take your pressure, you're going to get a pressure plus what coffee gave you. And so it wouldn't be the accurate one. <laughs> yeah. So it wouldn't be the accurate one. And so the key is that do not drink coffee before you take your pressure. So if you want to take your pressure, do that after you have, I mean, drink your coffee after you have taken your pressure. And uh, that is one of the things. And the other thing, the other thing is when you are ready, uh, to take the pressure. So 30 minutes have elapsed since you did any physical or strenuous activity. As much well, as she said, exercise, but it may not just be exercise. Maybe you work mm -hmm. and uh, you did some work in the house. It's not exercise, but you have been moving around, lifting stuff and, you know, oh, let me check my pressure. No, it would be considered strenuous enough to increase your pressure at that point. Okay. So though know, we say that it's exercise, it would be any physical activity that demands your heart, you know, output increasing. And so we would say that no strenuous activity 30 minutes before you check your blood pressure. And after that, you sit down. That is when you are ready to check your pressure, you have the machine and everything ready. You have to sit down and rest for five minutes. We call it what? Five minutes of quiet rest before taking the reading. That, this, is, this is the hard one. <laughs> Ask the time. You sit down for five minutes and you are sitting. Meanwhile, you are looking at the time. You want to go to work on time, you know. But we got to do it mm. if, if that's what it is. We got to work in that five minutes, you know. It's better to do it than to just, you know, do it anyhow, you know. And again, if it's important to you, we have to work it within our time because it is important, right? Mm. So you have to have a seated time five minutes before you actually start the, the, the reading. So you grab your chair, you sit, watch the time for five minutes, at which time your heart would have come to a rest. I mean, the walking that you walk to the place where you took the blood pressure, all those increase your pressure a little bit. So if you sat and you waited for five minutes, your heart would have come to a complete enough rest where you can get the real resting blood pressure instead of uh, some working blood pressure that you would get if you don't wait for the uh, five minutes. And then um, the next one, uh, the next one, you have to sit upright, right? Sit you sit comfortably right? with back supported and legs uncrossed. So I think uh, we were reading about it with the research that sometimes it's good to use your dining uh, chair 
because that is a little approach. Instead of sitting in, the, in your sofa, that may not be ideal. So if you use your dining room chair, that will make you sit upright and comfortably. Will like, support your back. To support your back. Mm -hmm. So because, you know, the dining table, they've such a, uh, like set a it, chair, right? <laughs> such a way that you are supposed to sit up mm -hmm. as you eat. So that will give you the perfect uh, pose posture to be able to get the right reading and your legs shouldn't be crossed so you have to uncross your legs sit upright and be ready to take your blood pressure all right all right all right <laughs> and then um the next one is to use a properly validated or calibrated machine we, sh we showed you all the kinds of machines available but we cannot pinpoint and say buy this brand buy that brand of course uh, we would be happy if some brands, you know, sponsor us and let us know how this work and according to what the AHA guidelines are. But so far, we don't have any brands dealing with us on that point. So we are not going to um, mention any, except to say that most of the brands out there are good. But that being said, the American Heart Association has a tool on their website that you can use to check to see if the brand you are buying or if the brand you have has been validated. So that's the key. That's the key. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if I promote a brand on our channel now, I would still make sure that that brand has been validated before I talk about it. Because if it's not validated, I cannot vouch for that brand. I can say that it is approved by the AHA or American Heart Association. That being said, uh, I don't. I'm not. We are not saying that only those ones that have been validated are good. We're just saying that if they have been validated, then somebody who has no financial dealings with the company has taken a look, it's an independent body, has taken a look mm -hmm. and said it's good. So at least you can go in with that confidence to buy that. And so that is what we are saying. So let's see, uh, I'm going to show you the American, uh, some of the uh, things that I think they show on there. So in, in their website, which I've put down there, it's a validatebp.org, uh, validatebp.org, which is the, um, which is the uh, website that they have if you punch in your blood pressure device type, then it will be able to tell you um, which ones are good, which ones are not good. And they have several, several you know, types of machines that have been validated on that site. And so you could just go in there. So again, the website is right there, validate BP, which is blood pressure.org. And you could use that as a tool to see if your machine is approved. Now, even though this machine is here, this is the wrist one, we do not, we do not uh, so support the wrist one. So even though they have validated this, if you have to use a wrist machine for whatever reason, maybe you have arm, <laughs> arm pain right there and you can't do anything about it, then of course you could use that one. But apart from that, we would say that don't use uh, that one because obviously it is not um, at the best because we have already told you we want something that is uh, far better than uh, just the wrist one, which we know. We, we all know that the wrist one is not the best, right? And also, um, there are several other uh, brands that we can uh, see on there. If you, if you already have it and you just want to check, you can punch in again uh, your, your model and just go to the side, validate, uh, bp.org and whichever brand you you know you want to check will be on there for you to check and see if it is one that has been validated um, or checked by uh, a group of people to say that it is good because if it's not checked then you buy it at your own risk and uh, I'm pretty sure that um, there, there may not be all good ones out there as much as there are good ones. There's definitely ones that may not be approved. We have a lot of machines that come from different countries and they may not have been tested or approved as being the good ones. So don't just buy, put it in, in this validation uh, 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 tool to see if it is something that has been checked by an independent body. Have anything to say? Yeah, and if you are not sure or mm -hmm. before you buy, you can always ask, uh, if you go to a pharmacy, you can ask the pharmacist what they recommend. I'm sure they, they know the ones that are popular and the ones that has been validated already. So you can always ask 
to see whether whatever you are about to buy is the appropriate run. Definitely. Whatever you are about to buy, you can check with a pharmacist or your doctor and uh, make sure that you get or grab the right ones. But as we said, we, um, uh, we are not going to suggest any brands today, though we know some brands. I have a brand that I use right here. I showed you a machine, but I'm not going to tell you that because then you go looking for only that. That's not the only one out there. The <laughs> other good ones out there. But for you to be able to get the right one, um, I think what Gibti is saying is a, an easy one. Just ask the farm sister. Sometimes your budget may be too tight. Mm -hmm. And um, see if you can have, most of them are good. But if you want to be like the, the uh, you know, the tech person that would make sure that you are getting the accurate numbers, then of course, go to the site and do the validate uh, BP. Uh, that org and check to see which machine may uh, fit your your needs and um, I think that that's a good place to uh, wrap that up right yeah. yeah so all right so that is that for uh, the machine types that we think you could uh, be using for your uh, blood uh, pressure now let's see what else we got uh, coming up so now we're talking about <coughs> The cuff size. So we talked about um, the preparation, mm -hmm. right? We talked about the preparation to get your blood pressure red. Now we're talking about the cuff size and where you should place it. So uh, this is technical. So we just want to make sure that you get everything out of this. So that's why we're going further deeper. So now you know you, you have to be seated 30 minutes um, after coffee or don't drink coffee within 30 minutes, no exercise, no strenuous activity. And when you sit down, make sure that you have uh, five minutes of rest before you start the reading. Now you have seated. We assume that you did all those things. How do you place the cuff and what kind of cuff size do you want? Yeah, before that, mm -hmm. I think I had this experience that uh, I was running late to my doctor's appointment, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to find packing. So I'm running late. So I keep driving around and around to find a spot. I got, I got a spot and I started running to the doctor's office because I'm late. So I rushed to the doctor's office and the moment that I got there, they called my name. <laughs> and they called my name and straight to the place that they checked the blood pressure. Mm -hmm. like, so the time for me to relax, to sit still and all that was taken away from me. And the nurse took the blood pressure and it was high. I'm like, no, this is too high. This is not me. This is not me. Yeah, so I could see that because of what I was doing before they took my blood pressure, the numbers were a little, a little elevated. So doing it right. So if you're going to your doctor's office, you try to get there a little early. When you're going, you know, you try to stay away from coffee and you are all relaxed. You get there, you sit relax a little bit before they call your name. But if you are such a person that you are always late, you are running late, it's likely that it may affect your numbers one way or the other. Come on, man, people and being late. Man, man, that's hard to beat. That's mm -hmm. why That's why sometimes when you go to doctor's office, they don't call you right away. Right they, away. they make you sit and sit and sit, which sometimes can be unknown, but maybe they saw you running in a parking lot. <laughs> Right, it's only right in the parking lot, so yeah. they want to make sure that you are relaxed before they call. Because when the nurse calls you, that's the first thing they take your weight and mm -hmm. they take your blood pressure. blood pressure. So if you run there and you didn't have time to sit and they check your pressure, it will be high right there. And then of course we also have the white coat uh, uh, syndrome. syndrome where people just have a, a high blood pressure just because they're seeing a person in a white coat and they're scared. What is this person going to tell me and stuff? And so all those things come together and you may have uh, an unusually high pressure. And that is why it's good to have another machine at home mm -hmm. for yourself. So um, no matter what, even if you don't have hypertension, it's good to invest in a good machine and, and prevent, you know, these things. So when you get checked at a doctor's and you also have your own numbers to match, you can say that, yeah, that's, that's me. Mm -hmm. But if at the doctor's is high, but when you check at home, it's low. And you have these good machines we're talking about. You're not doing the rest. You're also sitting down and taking your time like we've shown you now. Then, of course, you can say that, no, it's because it's a doctor's office. And the doctors know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they will tell you, give me your numbers. And they will see if you have taken your numbers for over a period of time, maybe a week or a month. They will see that it's been consistently low. But when you come for appointments, because you are scared, 
<laughs> or you are late all the time. It is hard. And they will be able to know that right away. So it's important to have uh, a machine. So now with that being said, let's move on to the next thing that we were saying. Say cuff size and placement, right? Mm -hmm. The arm cuff and placement. Let me do slide. Yeah, so the arm cuff one, I think um if you try to invest in the machine, some of them have two different uh arm cuff size. They have the regular size and they have the big size. Mm -hmm. So if your arm is huge, mm. you have to make sure that you buy the one that has the extra uh, length, like it has a longer length mm -hmm. so that it doesn't become too tight on you mm -hmm. because you have to make sure that you pick the right size. So the doctor's office, I think they have several sizes. So when you are buying, make sure that you, you can take the measurements and they tell you the sizes of the cuffs. So you just don't go grab anything. When you're buying, make sure that you pick the appropriate one that can fit nicely when you're not too big and not too small for your arm. Not too big. If it's too big, you are going to get wrong readings. And if it's too small, you're going to get wrong readings. And some of the cups, they will tell you on the box, in the packaging, like this one I have here, it tells you how big it is, a medium to large, and then it says fits arm 8.7 to 16 0.5 inches <laughs> or if you are in a, a, a place where you use SI units it's 22 to 42 centimeters so it gives you the information and you can use it and if you bought it and it's too big or too uh, small you can always bring it back and exchange it for a one that fits you because if the arm cuff size is too big then it's not going to work out good you are going to get wrong readings even though you purchased it and the other thing is the placement right let me see if we can also show, demonstrate how you place it. So you place your cuff uh, in such a way that uh, you shouldn't have any clothing like this. This is like a jacket. You could potentially use uh, a very thin fabric on. You could potentially do that. But definitely you have to have, uh, if you can do without a clothing, that is, that is the best. So your arm must it must be something like this the the placement the end of your of your cuff must rest right where the elbow goes like that so it shouldn't be over the elbow nor should it be all the way higher it has to be the end should just sit on that and the tubing must also come this way not around here or anywhere it has to come from the middle of your arm like that that is when you have the arm cuff placed right and then i think um are we going to talk about where to put the uh, hand also in this one or it's the next one? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the next one. <laughs> so having done this, so now you have the right size cuff and you have put it on right without a jacket. Forget my, my jacket right now. If I was taking my pressure, I would take this off. So you don't put it on a jacket, especially as thick as this. You could potentially put it on a, on a linen clothing, uh, but since you're doing it at your house, why do you even put a clothing on? Just take that shirt off and give yourself room in, uh, enough to hit um, your, your arteries with the cuff itself so that you get some of the best uh, measurements. Um, that is how you get them. So with that being said, I think um, the next point is we are going to uh, definitely uh, see uh, how uh, to do the next thing. The next thing is, oh, so actually we still have to do that one then. Uh, checking, your, taking the reading, yes. This is where we take the reading. So taking the reading now, this person that we are showing has placed it somewhat perfect. Um, the only thing that I have with this is the tubing is not in the middle of the arm. It should be in the center of the arm, like I showed you. So the tubing has to come right in the center not on the side like this person's arm is showing. The tube should be right in the center of your arm like that, not on the side. This one is almost to the side, but it's close enough, so we, we get the idea. But as far as the placement of the end of the cuff, it's right on point at the joints of the elbow. That's what we want, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so now taking the reading, what are the things we do for the reading? Is saying that you have to place your arm on a flat surface, like a table. I think Gifty alluded to using maybe your dining hall table if it is not so high up. 
but your arms should rest on a flat surface, mm-hmm. which is able to support you. At the same time, it shouldn't be above your heart level. So if you put it and it's like this, it's wrong. Mm-hmm. It has to be down enough uh, to be there so that you're comfortable. And then your arm is also close to your, uh, it's close to your chest, I mean, your heart level. Mm-hmm. That's what it says. Just yeah. make sure so that... Your- Arm should be in the like the middle part should be in line with your chest area. So you have to find a table that is just right, not too low and not too high. So it will be in right in the middle like this. And also your feet should be flat on the ground, uncrossed, not not and sit okay. upright with your back being supported. Definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I wish I could show. Uh, the source of a different camera where we can see it on the table but um, this is why we need people to support us so we can buy more cameras to show this right now <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, there's a way to show another source i think i have another uh, camera source that we could show uh, um on the table but I, I think you get the idea um um the, i'm being on a flat surface you being on uh, on a, uh, a chair that supports your back <laughs> Your arm, your elbow pad being in line with your heart, not too low, not too high, and being comfortable. Uh, kind of like what this picture shows with the man that we are seeing. And that is uh, what we are talking about. Is there any other thing that we can tell? That you have to remain silent and still during the measurement. You don't want to talk or get distracted when you're taking the reading. My goodness. That is another big one that people miss. Hey, John, what are you doing? Don't you see I'm taking my blood pressure? No, you can't do that. Come on, man. <laughs> that, that number is bad. Because as you scream, as you shout it, the, the pressure, your, your heart may just do something else. So you don't want that. You got to be fully calm, relaxed, and quiet. Even if the kids are you know, breaking down the house, you remain quiet. Unless you, st- you, you take it all over again. You can't just pause and do your own thing and then, oh, uh, reading, what's the reading? No, that's bad. You got to be quiet. You got to be calm. You, you, you definitely have to be quiet and calm as you read your numbers to get the right numbers. So I think those are the things uh, that we wrote down. And then you a, can take uh, one or two readings or two or three readings, that's one part minute of the tips. apart. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So now with that, I think she already started on the, on the tips. So now what are some of the tips? Uh, we showed you the process of taking the blood pressure. But the tips to getting the numbers really good mm-hmm. is what she started with. She's saying that take multiple checks, read multiple times, and then strike an average, right? So when you sit to, to take the pressure, even though you waited five minutes before you put your arm in the cuff, you probably still had your heart still racing or pumping hard a little bit from doing all those things. So your first try may be higher. So you wait after that and then do another trial. Now, as a matter of fact, it is even recommended that you take three readings in a shot. But people don't have time. So if you can do even two, praise God, we will take two. But if you can, then do three readings and strike an average. We are not saying that three readings and then put them uh, first one plus this plus and, and divide by three. No, you can tell. If you do three and two of them are like 142, 150, and the first one is like 162, you know that eh, the 162 may be off. That's probably when you just came to sit down. So you take the two and say that you probably are around the two. If you do two and one is higher, you probably need to do another one to confirm which one is actually the normal reading for you. That's why three is usually the best. But if you can even do two for us, praise God. <laughs> because it's, I mean, it's time consuming. You know, I'm talking about all these things that we are talking about. Uh, preparing 30 minutes before you sit and then when you sit reading for five minutes you know you're not drinking your coffee you are in a rush for work if you can agree and do that and even do two for us as a matter of fact we we'll even take one because most, <laughs> <laughs> because most, most people don't even do it at all they have the machine but it's dusty they don't even know where it is the battery is dead and uh and they think that buying the machine was solving the problem so if you can do one or two so much the better and another tip is actually also to take it morning and evening. Mm. So you do the morning readings and you do evening readings. And that will give you uh, a, a sense of what it is. Some people's pressure go higher in the mornings when they wake up. It's very high. 
but as time goes on it calms down and then in the evening it is very low or for some people it's the opposite they wake up with low pressure and they start increasing in the day and maybe because they are stressed at work stressed by kids stressed by wife stressed by husband and then by the end of the day their pressure is high so um however yours increases you can only find out if you check it both morning and evening mm-hmm. and especially if you can do the averages of them then you can know that yes this is my pressure you can tell you can argue with your doctor and say doc i took three times in the morning three times in the evening i took it, i took it seven days in the week and my average was 120 so the doctor said 140 you said oh, i don't believe in minus 120 and if i'm if i'm hiding i'll say that yeah he's right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's right. It's 140 because of the white coat syndrome or because they were late for the appointment. That's why it's 140, you know. But you got to do it multiple times to know where it is at. Yes, so that is one of the big tips to give you. The more you take, the better the sense of what it actually is for you. And the other key... And I think you have to document. Documentation. Uh, you don't just memorize and mm. just guess and assume. Because sometimes, like you're saying, it may be low in the evening, high in the morning. Or maybe it's continuously every day is creeping up slowly. Mm-hmm. So if you write it down, it will make more sense to you as you look at the numbers. Or when you go to the doctor's office and you show, then they will know. That, uh, yeah, this is what is happening. Slowly, it's increasing, and they have to do something about it. Definitely. Yeah. Documentation is very, very important. <laughs> Definitely. Very, very, very serious. Now, the good thing with some of these automatic machines is that they record the numbers for mm-hmm. you. So you can flip them even if you forget to write them. As long as you bring the machine to your doctor, they can look through. But if you forget, then write them. Sometimes when you write them, it makes more sense. Mm-hmm. For me, when I write stuff, you don't forget because you are looking at it, your eye registers and you write. And you are writing 150, you are writing 160. No way you will start and you will continue to eat the salt. You will know. <laughs> you will know that something is up. But if you leave it on the machine, before you know you forgot, the machine turns off and you forgot. You wrote it down, you see the paper again. Hey, this thing is 160. This thing is 150. I got to do something. Yes. You, will, you will definitely be reminded to do something about it. So I think the documentation, though the machine can take it for you, I would still write it just to speak to you because numbers speak louder than words, mm. right? <laughs> Pictures yep. speak louder. All right. So I think that is what uh, some of the tools, um, tips. Do you have any other tips? Yeah. And with the frequency, I think mm-hmm. it would depend. Uh, it would depend with where you are. If you are, you've been diagnosed mm-hmm. already by your doctor as being hypertensive or you you don't you've not, not been di- diagnosed mm-hmm. but you want to make sure that you don't get to that point you know so depending on where you are will determine how frequent you test uh you, you check your blood pressure i think the last time uh dr nate recommended that if you are uh, you don't have high blood pressure and you want to know you can do it twice a year or maybe not frequently but if you are pre hypertensive and you are watching it and the doctor have asked you to monitor it, then it's very necessary that you have to make time. You have to get the 30 minutes in, the five minutes set, and do it right and get the numbers. So the frequency will depend on where you are when it comes to blood pressure. Definitely. And if you are diagnosed, I would encourage you to do it every day. If the doctor has told you that you have hypertension and you are taking medications for it, Measuring it every day, even if it's not twice a day, at least if you do it in the mornings, you have an idea if your medication is working or if your diet and lifestyle change are working. So if you have been diagnosed, then for you, we will encourage you to continue to do it every day. But like she said, if you have not been diagnosed, but you have a family history and you're trying to catch it before it creeps up, then of course, once a week, maybe twice a uh, a month or whatever, if you... And these machines... I think one thing we didn't talk about was the prices of them. Some of them are really cheap. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are expensive ones. There are ones that are over $100. And for those that are that expensive, $80 to $100, those are made with some bells and whistles <laughs> as far as technology is concerned. Right. You get a Bluetooth on it. You will get two people actually being able to use it and document at the same time on the machine. So the machine will record for you and for your husband. So it's like buying two in one machine. But if it's just you and you're buying... Upwards of, I mean, $30, $40, you can get a decent machine. Mm-hmm. 
you know, brand name I'm talking about. So if you want a store brand like uh, like a CVS brand or, or any other pharmacy brand, that's even going to be cheaper unless it's also built with those bells and whistles. So you cannot actually say that it's too expensive. Depends on the brand that you invest in. And all you need to know is your blood pressure. Mm. You, you know, we didn't say some of the things, but some of them have been made to give you some extra information that you may not need, like your, um, I mean, most of them come with, with your, a heart rate. with a heart rate also, um, but you really don't need that. And some of them have other useful information that you may not even been able to interpret, you know. Uh, but if you want just a decent blood pressure monitoring kit, it's cheap, you know. I, I won't say cheap because everybody's financial situation is, is different. But I would say that it is decent enough for you to be able to afford. And so don't use that as an excuse because you've got to know. if you Some of the things that you can know at home, I, I love them. I don't like blood uh, sugar machine, you can... You can find out yourself, you know, uh, and then also when you are prescribed, then you make your uh, insurance pay for it if you have insurance. So certain things you can, uh, you know, invest in and, 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 and make changes. And while at that, we can also say that some of the devices that are coming up, such as your, your phones and your uh, watches, mm. will give you some of these uh, pieces of information. I'm not sure if the Apple Watch can do blood pressure, but I know it can do heart rate mm -hmm. and it can also do blood oxygen levels, you know, uh, which uh, may not be useful to our case right now. I mean, at least heart rate, you know, especially if you are somebody who is trying to exercise and stuff, you'll be able to tell your heart rate if you have an Apple Watch or an Android Watch, you'll be able to use that. And I'm pretty sure there may be attachments that you can have, like an accessory that you can <laughs> buy and add on to measure your blood pressure if you are the person that is high tech um, in that area. Do you have anything <laughs> else? All right. So with that being said, let's see what else we have on the uh, live. I think that we are almost uh, done with our, um, <clears throat> our thing. Let's see if there's anything else. All right. So this is where we play a game. If you are watching with us, we want you to tell us. What, what is wrong here? If you if you started a show with us since the beginning, or at least you caught us before we um, talked about how to measure your blood pressure, I want you to put in the comment, what is wrong with this lady's technique of measuring blood pressure? I'll give you a couple of seconds, and then after that, we will say it if you don't. You know, some people are watching, and if you watch later, you know, after the replay, you want to quiz yourself, what is wrong with this lady's... Um, technique of measuring her blood pressure. Uh, you can write them all in the chat or in the comments and we will be careful to see. We want to see that you actually understood what we uh, explained today. I know those of you in TikTok, you can see this, um, but um, uh, hopefully you can go back later on onto our YouTube channel and watch it at Dr. Oteng, um, uh, D-R space O-T-E-N-G and also answer those um, questions we have here. Yeah, the first one is, what is wrong with this lady's technique? Yes, I'm waiting for anybody who wants to take a shot at it. Nobody has said anything yet, but I know some people are watching live, and um, if you want to take a snap, uh, a shot at it, you can say it. Otherwise, we are just going to go forward. But if you are watch, if you're going to be watching, which most people do after the live, and you get to this point, Make sure you answer it before you move forward. Don't say that uh, the live is over. No, we want to see. <laughs> we want to see if we are paying attention. What is wrong with this lady's technique? I and mean, you can start. In the okay, interest of time. so uh, she's seated on her bed. So mm -hmm. uh, sitting on your bed means that you are not sitting upright. You can see that she's not sitting upright. She's not supported with any chair in no, the back, right? Yeah, no support at the back. And I don't know where the legs are. The mm -hmm. legs should be flat, uncrossed. And on flat floor. on the on the on the floor, mm -hmm. and also the arm is not in the heart level, mm -hmm. so you have to raise the arm on a table such it should that be, it should be resting on the it same should be table. resting on the table so mm -hmm. that it's in the same line as your heart. The elbow should be in the same level as your heart, which this one is not. So those are the things that I can see that she's doing wrong. And I can also see that she has a clothing underneath her uh, the cuff. The clothing may be thin, but I don't think it's thin enough. And especially if you see that she has creased the, uh, the clothing all the way up. So it's going to be in the way. Uh, you can tell the cuff is not even tight enough. You see, mm -hmm. she's just wiggling it around. So 
that is definitely going to affect her numbers. And the other thing I can see is that the tubing that is coming out of the cuff is also just dangling on the side. It has mm -hmm. to be uh, in the middle of the arm like that. The tubing has to be in the center and the middle. It's just uh, dangling on the side. And the other thing is that her body is actually tan. She's mm -hmm. not resting like she should. You know, her body is turned like this and she's doing it. That is not how you take your pressure. You have to sit upright with your back leaning against a firm chair. That's why we say, I'll give dimension using the dining hall chair um, to, to do that. And you don't cross yourself, cross your legs or cross your neck. <laughs> the way she's looking down doing this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect her reading. So that is one important error that we see in this lady's technique. Um, sitting on a bed, no chair to support the back, uh, cross legs perhaps, or hanging legs, and the cuff not tight enough, and also on the shirt, and the tubing on the side, not in the middle of the arm. Those are the easy things we can find out, as well as her body turned, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so that is that. Now let's move on. There's yeah, another. I think somebody mm -hmm. may say that, oh, I just want to take a quick reading. So if you're taking a quick reading, it doesn't mean you should do it wrong. Wrong reading, yeah. You have quick to do reading it right. will still make it wrong. So that will be a waste of your time. Mm -hmm. you, you did it, but it's still wrong. And you can get a good number from here, especially if the, the cuff is so loose. Uh, it, it's going to give you something good, and it may be bad. If your machine is <laughs> yeah, uh, if your machine is good enough, the machine sometimes will tell you that the cuff is not tight, mm -hmm. uh, and you have to do it over. It may give you error An reading. error reading, <laughs> yes. Some machines will do that. All right, good, 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 good. All right, let's see uh, what the other one is. So on this one, what is wrong with this? Uh, people are silent today. Nobody wants to take a stab at this, huh? <laughs> All right. So what is wrong with this um, today? I think uh, the person is using the wrist uh, uh, monitor, which doesn't really give a good reading. So that's the first one that I can see right away. Definitely. This is using the wrist monitor, which is not accurate compared to the arm cuffs. So uh, definitely I would not use this. If you have it, now, keep using it until you can buy the arm cuff. You don't say that, throw it out, because it's better than nothing if you already have it. But if you're going to buy it new, then please stay away from the wrist ones. She's got a good technique. She's writing mm -hmm. it down, which we want people to do. But unfortunately, she may be writing the wrong numbers. <laughs> <laughs> she may be writing the wrong numbers for you right there. And, uh, you can is... see that the level, the arm level is on, in the right spot. Too. Yes. She's got a firm table that it's on. She, all her techniques. We don't see her entire body. We don't see if she's leaning against a hard surface on, as far as chair, a chair is concerned. But uh, at least we can tell that the arm cuff is not what we want for a machine to use for blood pressure. And so that makes the whole experience not the best. All right. That, right, all right. I think that's all for the quiz. And I hope that people will answer in, um, when they watch later on. So the next thing then, uh, before we wrap up, is understanding the results. Now that you know what the numbers are, if you did it right, if you went through the whole thing with us and you understand how to take the blood pressure measurements right, correctly, and accurately, what's the implication of the numbers? We, we told you earlier on what the numbers mean, like the top, what it means to have the top, and what it means to have the bottom. And... What do they mean? We just uh, as a hash, we can go over quickly. The top number is your systolic. It's the pressure that is measured when your heart contracts and pumps the blood. And then the bottom number is the diastolic, which is the pressure that is measured when your heart relaxes. So each time the, the heart pumps, the pumping action of the blood reaches the higher number, and the relaxing action after each pump is the bottom number, which is the diastolic. And then we said that uh, with that, uh, known what is the interpretation of your numbers and we went over these numbers which I think is a handy thing to have with you you can always refer back to this video and this um, chat on the American Heart Association website to see if your numbers are right or not um, if you can call your doctor and you want to just see you can tell right from this chat that uh, your heart or your blood pressure may be elevated it may be normal uh, it may be in stage one, it may be stage two, and you may be in crisis, in which case we, uh, we explain that you have to see or call your doctor immediately. 
because you will be a walking stroke mm. waiting to happen, a walking heart attack, walking aneurysm waiting to happen, gone too soon waiting to happen, which we don't want to hear. And so um, this, will be a, this will be a guide to you. So knowing how to measure it right doesn't end there. But you got to know what they mean and what they stand for. And then finally, uh, unless you want to say anything. And then finally, if you know that you have been diagnosed with hypertension, what do you do about it? And uh, we can't end without saying what you should do. We're saying that you have to have a lifestyle change, which will eventually help you overcome hypertension. And by lifestyle, lifestyle change, we mean the way you eat and your exercise. That's all about it. How you eat, your exercise, and also your, your how frequent you are at your doctor's office. You don't go a year without seeing a doctor because you don't feel sick, because you don't have infection, because you don't have anything, no virus, or even if you had virus, you overcome it. And so no doctor for you. You don't even want to buy health insurance because you think that you are cool. You are not sick. You are, you are shocked. You may be shocked, but your pressure may be shocking you. <laughs> <laughs> your blood pressure and your cholesterol, your blood sugar, they may all be going up. And so the key is your lifestyle change, eating right, cutting down on sodium, cutting down on uh, a lot of the salt and processed foods, and then including the natural foods, which has high fiber. And then, of course, after that, exercise. So if you can do those three things, exercise, eating right, and seeing your doctor more often, we can, we can challenge you that you're going to be all right, mm. no matter what the diagnosis is, because you are looking up for it and because you're doing the things you, we explained that you do, it eventually will turn out to be good. What do you have to say before we close out? Yeah, so uh, if you are doing all the right things, uh, you are watching your diet, you are exercising, you've cut down the sodium, you are increasing the intake of potassium, uh, you're doing it all. And also you are taking your medication. I know some people sometimes are not diligent. They will forget taking their medication. I think last time we suggested that you can set an alarm or you will have it in such a way that it's attached to an activity. So yours is such that you take your medication uh, when you take your breakfast or when you take your lunch or when you take your dinner or when you go to bed. So it's at your bed start. However you can put it in during the day so that you will remember to take your medication. If you're doing it all and still you're checking your readings and you realize that it's still high, then it means that you have to let your doctor know. You don't want to brush it off. You don't want to ignore the numbers because you bought the device for a reason so that you monitor. So if you're monitoring and you seems not to get the numbers under control, it may be something that was going on. It may be that the dose that you are is not appropriate or the doctor needs to up it or add a second medication. So don't ignore the numbers. If you're doing all the right things and your numbers seems not to be controlled, let your doctor know. If you bring it up and your doctor is not showing interest, you can change your PCP. You can find a new doctor who will pay attention. Because we talked about the complications of not controlling your blood pressure. So don't ignore the numbers if it seems not to be going down, though you are doing all the right things. All right, all right, all right, all right. That is good. We have a comment that did not show. I'm not sure why. Okay, this is a comment. <laughs> and uh, brother saying... Uh, ben Ziki saying that I'm late, but please keep up the good work. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much for the encouragement. Thank you for the encouragement. All right. And uh, before we close out again, we want to say that thank you for joining us. Share the video and click the like and uh, thumbs up the love or whatever it is that you do on Facebook and YouTube and LinkedIn and, and TikTok and all those places that you're watching us from. And uh, we are planning on additional content uh, uh, potentially in the week. It's, uh, we're still praying about it, which way to go. We, we've got a lot of stuff that uh, we have to share. And uh, soon we'll let you know. 
But in the meantime, we thank you for joining and, uh, and making it fun. And um, hopefully, uh, people who watch later will answer some of the questions uh, and see if they are on point as far as taking and measuring their blood pressure is concerned. So I think uh, we can prelude what we are going to do next week and then see uh, what it is. Next week, we are going to talk about exercise strategies to lower your blood pressure. What are some of the things that we can do in order to bring your pressure down in terms of exercise? You know, exercise helps, but there has been studies that have shown some unique exercise mm. that makes blood pressure go down. And I think I have a video on it it's on another channel. I'm not sure. Uh, but we're going to show you what kinds of exercise you can do to help with your blood pressure. So make a date with us next time, uh, next week, same time, if not before. And before then, uh, until then, I should say, we will say, Beloved, beloved we, we wish above all things, things that, that you, you prosper and be, and be in, in health, health even, even as your soul prospers. prospers. Thanks Thank for joining.